All right, guys, we're back out here on the range. We're talking about the Glock 43 again. Yes, we've already done two videos on it, but we've got a pretty special treat today. Actually, I contacted Robar out in uh, Phoenix, Arizona and sent my original Glock 43 off to them to have pretty much the full treatment done. And that's kind of what we're showing off today. Um, this is and has been my daily carry since um, I picked it up last year. Uh, we did a video kind of early spring on the gun. Glock brought the gun down to us. We did the first video on it before it came out. And then uh, I went out and purchased one from Moss and uh, pretty much started carrying it. It had some rusting issues and a few other odds and ends. You guys have seen that before, but um, this is an awesome, awesome gun now. I know a lot of people are still kind of in the fence like, hey, I don't really like Glock. You know, why'd you have to you know, do that? You put lipstick on a pig. Well, I mean, being a daily carry, it's one of those things I want it to be as best uh, quality as I can get out of it. And um, some of the features that Robar and several other companies on the market actually do, uh, they do enhance the usability of a gun like this for daily carry. Uh, we're gonna go over some of the features of this gun. I do have an original stock Glock 43 right here. This one I actually bought from my wife recently, carried it for a couple of months, still have the same kind of corrosion issues even with a uh, you know, regular treatment of oil uh, just from carrying it 12 plus hours a day. But Robar has been in the business of customizing firearms for a very, very long time. Um, you know, they do uh, several different types of uh, metal treatments, finishes, coatings, such as that. Uh, they do some stuff in the aerospace industry as well. But uh, I think what they're most well known for is their firearms modifications and especially polymer frame guns, 1911s, and such as that. But uh, this gun features a basically an NP3 coating on all the internals. So you're talking a very durable, high quality corrosion resistant finish that all the internal surfaces of the gun are coated with. So it's got actually a Teflon finish that's kind of integrated into it. So it gives a super slick surface. So you don't really need any sort of extra lubrication on the internal parts. Um, they do a coating on the slide called Poly T2, which is a coating, but it will hold up to a ton of abuse. It's basically just as tough as like an MP3 type coating, but they do offer it in a few different colors. This one's uh, just a tan coloration. They do some, um, slide serrations up front to match the serrations that come stock with the gun, which I think is really classy. And it gives you the ability to press check the gun and also get a good grip on it to load the firearm as well from the front or the rear. They added some Trizicon DPU sights. As you well know, Eric and I love these sights. They're our favorite carry style sight. You've got a, a very large, um, bright fluorescent color bead up front with a, a tritium insert. And then you've got a uh, serrated rear sight for um, low reflectivity. And then you've got two tritium vials on the rear too for nighttime use. They do a very nice stippling of the grip, pretty much a proprietary coating that they drop on there. And it's not terribly aggressive. It doesn't really, you know, burn your hand or anything like that when you're actually, you know, handling the gun and firing it. It's just a really nice subtle texture and gives you that extra little bit of grip. They do a high grip modification, round the trigger guard off. You get that texture up there too. And then this one features one of their flat shoe overwatch triggers. And this is a all aluminum trigger that they drop into the gun. So a very high performance upgraded part. Robar also does a special uh, frame modification with an extended beaver tail on polymer frame guns. And it's just, it's so seamless. I'm just so impressed with the quality of this addition. You can't even tell where they seamed it in or anything. And it gives you that extra security that your, you know, meat between your thumb and your forefinger there isn't gonna get bit up with the slide. So that way you can get a really good solid high grip on the gun. And that's what the undercut on the trigger guard allows you. They call it a high grip modification. So you get a little bit more purchase on the gun, therefore reducing the muzzle flip. I mean, all the improvements that are made to this are meant to be used. So this gun comes from back from Robar, ready to put it in a holster and be put to use. And you know, all the internals being coated like they are, it's meant to be a very low maintenance firearm at that point. So that's kind of the big idea. You get these special coatings put on there. The internal parts are self-lubricating basically. You drop it in your holster and you wear it and you don't worry about it. Take it out every now and again, cycle your carry ammo through there, just test it for function, but things working great. And we're gonna be running a variety of different ammo today. Uh, we've got some uh, Federal HST, some of the micro variety. This is 150 grain loading. We're gonna be running a little bit of that and we've got some 147 grain, just good old standby HST to load. And this is what I actually carry on a regular basis. So. I like carrying the heaviest possible round in my uh, carry pieces that I can. So 147 grain is pretty much it. Uh, ball ammo, we're running some uh, Aguila. This is uh, 124 grain. 
just run of the mill, 124 grain variety. I've got two more mags loaded up. Let me put my ears back on. We'll take a few more shots for you here. Kind of see what this little guy's all about. I'm really, really loving the trigger improvements. I mean, it's a flat shoe, so it takes a minute to get used to compared to the old style uh, stock trigger. But I will say that the, uh, the, the safety mechanism in the trigger on the stock uh, gun is real sharp. So what I did with my stock one was trimmed it down a little bit because my wife was complaining that it was kind of digging into her forefinger or you know her fingertip a little bit. But this all aluminum, all the edges are nicely rounded over and uh, radius, very, very slick and smooth trigger. Take a few more shots and then we're gonna load up some more mags, run some hollow points, just have a little bit of fun, just kind of show this little guy off and gives me a chance to test it some more. Let's see what we can do here. Just gonna shoot a group basically about 12 yards away on this gong here. Well, those two shots stacked right on top of each other. Spoke too soon. Favoring a little bit left with this particular ammo. Let's see if we can get a little bit better grip on the gun here. Maybe it's me just pulling it over. Yep, let's try a headshot. <laughs> oh man, you know, a lot of people say that, you know, Glock, Shield, Eric and I have shot both of them, and uh, Eric carries a Shield, he's a big M&P guy, and I've just always been a big Glock guy, so is he, but something about the 43 that I just really, really enjoy. I sh shoot it fairly well, it's real comfortable to carry, and that's why I've been carrying it all the time, is because it just carries so easily. And uh, I started carrying appendix last year, and I, I don't know how anybody could carry any other way now. A lot of people say it's uncomfortable, but I just carry in this, uh, it's a Wolf Hollow Tactical Holster. It's um, just one that I picked up uh, after NRA last year. We met these guys that are local to us, and uh, you basically got a spot for your gun and an extra mag. So people say that the capacity on these is a little bit lacking. Well, I got an extra mag, plus they make uh, you know, plus two base extensions for these, so you can get eight shots in the mag plus one in the gun. I mean, shields, you can get seven, and then eight rounds plus extensions if you want to, but I don't know. It's just one of those things, but we're going to be doing a, a comparative video here before too long. Eric actually has a shield that we sent to Robar as well, because he was having some corrosion issues and a few other odds and ends going on with his gun as well that he carries. So we're going to be basically doing a video on both of these guns and then doing a comparative showdown of both of the firearms kind of putting them through their paces and just giving our basic opinion on both guns and after carrying them for so long let's take a few more shots and we're gonna break out some hollow points here let's take out those sodas back there let's see may have to regulate these sights just a tiny bit oh he's mortally wounded Let's take him out. <laughs> ah, the fresh smell of fruit punch in the air. Oh, he's hiding. Ah, let's take out our gopher. Oh, just to the left. Boy, this thing is just so smooth. All right, let's get serious here. Look for that popper back there. All right, let's see. We got one back there about 25 yards. Let's see if I can hit that. Oh, just to the left. Oh, where's it going? It might be too small for a little tiny gun. Oh no. Man, I'm hitting just to the left. I'm not going to let that slide. This video, guys, just meant to be kind of a showcase of, you know, this gun. I mean, sent it off to Robar, had them do the work on it. And there's a lot of new companies out there that do this kind of similar work. But to me, you know, I've, I remember growing up and seeing Robar guns in all the gun magazines that I would read all the time. 
and I just thought they were so cool, you know. Finally got around to getting with the company, and some folks would also say, you know, why'd you waste all that money on getting a Glock 43 of all guns dressed up? Well, I carry it all the time. It's my favorite carry piece. So I say, why not? Let's load this up. I did say we'd shoot some hollow points, and we're gonna do that, but I'm not quite satisfied yet. Take a few more shots at these targets, a little bit further away just for fun. Let's see. Thirty-five yard gong. Very much outside of combat distance, but still, this thing's pitting the ace for sure. Yep. One thing with these little guns that I've noticed, I need to shoot this gun a little bit more, but if you don't have a really good solid grip on this thing, even with the shield and like the 45 shield that we've shown too, they will pull the shots to the left. Eric and I have that issue with micro guns like this. You really gotta have a good solid grip on this thing to keep it from torquing over. Let's try something just a little bit different, see if we can get it centered up here. There we go, yep. Minor grip modification. Let's see. What more can you ask for? Let's load up some of these hollow points. We're gonna reset the range, put some more sodas up, and we're gonna uh, go to town with some of these HSTs, see what we got. All right guys, we're gonna take a few shots with uh, some hollow points here, because obviously it is a carry gun, so you're not gonna carry ball, really. So I've got some 150 grain uh, Federal HST, it's, uh, they call this the Personal Defense Micro. So it's designed with, uh, it, the way it's advertised is it has a really clean burning powder and whatnot to get um, maximum velocity out of a short barrel, like a Glock 43 or like a shield or anything else that's like a micro size carry gun on the market. But uh, Tommy over at TN Outdoors 9 did an ammo review comparing it to just regular old 147 grain HST which you get about double the ammo for the same money and really didn't see much of a difference. I bought it just to try test for function and you know maybe do some ballistic gel testing of our own in the future but I'm gonna shoot a couple of sodas with this run it on some steel and then I've got two mags loaded up with the HST and then uh, we're gonna go back to some ball ammo and close this little puppy out. Just thought it'd be kind of cool to you know show you guys kind of the row bar treatment of these guns and you know Something like this isn't really for everybody. I mean, it's it's expensive, and you know, you think, why would I want to spend like double, you know, on customizing a firearm than the gun is really worth? Well, it all comes down to personal preference, and you know, in my experience with with this particular gun, I love it, and I wanted it to be, like I said, the best that it can be. So let's try this out on some sodas. 150 grain micro HST. Let's see where this stuff is hitting here. Well, I lost a couple of my sodas. Uh, let's see. <laughs> oh man, still hitting a little bit to the left. I am gonna have to regulate those sights over just a touch. Let's shoot a little bit of a, let's try to shoot a group on the steel here with the 150s. Certainly a decent size. I mean, you're talking probably three, three and a half inches or so. It's 12 yards away. Let's try the 147s. I got two sodas standing down there. I'm not really expecting to see much difference. It is a hollow point, so. <laughs> oh, I love it. finish that out and kind of just make a group on that target there too. Aim for that bolt up there. Yep. 
definitely a tighter pattern with the regular 147s. I was aiming at the bolt on that target there, talking 13 yards away. I mean, very much right in there at self self defense range. Man, what a wonderful shooting gun. All right, so I'm gonna take a few last shots with the uh, Robard 43 here. And, you know, just thinking about it, you know, I bought my wife this gun. Bad thing is I'm gonna have to send it to Robar and have him do the same thing because she likes mine now better. Guys, I'm telling you, married guys, <laughs> it's the way it is when your wife likes guns too. Let's take a few more shots. Yeah, 75 yard gong back there's been a little, uh, he's been a little lonely today. Let's see if we can connect with him. Well, that was, I'm not gonna say it. Okay. Ah. Shoot. Good enough for government work for sure. We put a couple of targets out in the woods. We got that one that we had at 35 I was shooting a little bit earlier. Got one at 40. Let's see if we can shoot him just for fun. Uh-oh. Shoot. I'll take that any day of the week. Those first few shots, I stacked them into the size of a dang baseball. Man, what a great little gun. And we'll finish off with our gopher there. <laughs> oh, guys, I just love it. Um, we just wanted to take this opportunity to show you kind of what's out there as far as customization for carry guns. And like I mentioned in the intro, I mean, if you're going to bet your life on it, you better make sure that it's going to work under pretty much all circumstances. And kind of curious to see how this gun holds up after daily carry. This is going to be a daily carry gun. So I'm going to put it back in the holster and uh, I'm going to carry it 12 plus hours a day, every single day, like I always do. And we'll uh, revisit this, you know, a few months down the line and just see how the gun's holding up and all. And um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to see any rust on this finish, but we will report back our findings and let you guys know for sure. But um, I'm going to leave it dirty just like it is right now. And uh, we're going to go from there. But hope you enjoyed this look at this little Robard 43. Very, very cool little carry gun. I love it. Very excited to uh, be using this thing. And um, like I said, I'm going to regulate those sights over and uh, we're going to go from there, test it out, make sure it's good. Going in the holster and it's going to be carried. You guys take care. Stay tuned. We've got a lot more on the way.